Recently, a new chatbot has sort of mysteriously appeared and might actually be an updated version of the GPT models, possibly a GPT 4.5 or maybe even GPT 5. Let's take a look. Hey guys, Jason is here. I'm the Nerdy Novelist, and for the last year, I've been teaching writers how to use AI and writing principles together in harmony to create the best possible output. Now, in this video, this is going to be a little bit different. I won't have as many uh, cuts and edits in this one because I'm making this literally a day before I have to go out on vacation. So I'm having to scramble to get this ready. But this news dropped and I was really intrigued by it and had to show you what was going on. So there's this platform called LMSYS, which I assume stands for language model systems that is used primarily to compare models against each other and to see as objectively as possible which is better at what. And recently, a new chatbot labeled GPT-2 chatbot, yes, GPT-2, just kind of mysteriously appeared and people started using it and found that it had much better reasoning and math skills and all of those sort of benchmarks that most people look at when assessing the strength of a large language model to the point that people are actually speculating that this is GPT 4.5. And to add fuel to the fire, Sam Altman recently tweeted that he does have a soft spot for GPT-2, which has now got people thinking like, is this a, you know, a little hint at something? Now the, the real GPT-2 is an older model that is not really good. <laughs> I don't think we've really ever been using it in more recent times. There isn't really a use case for it because once ChatGPT came along with GPT-3.5, that alone was so much better. But this GPT-2 is not the same as that GPT-2. It is far better and definitely superior to GPT-4 in a lot of different ways. And so I went to go test it out and see if it does okay for writing related activities. Let me show you how you can do the same thing. So all you have to do is come to this website, chat.lmsys.org. And then you, if you can, you want to go here to direct chat and then under direct chat, there will be a, a number of models that you can test. And the one you're looking for here is GPT-2 chatbot. Once you select that, you can enter your chat. Now I've found, as you can see, it's giving me an error here. I have found that it is a little overwhelmed, their site. And so it was very difficult for me to actually get the model to respond to me. I was able to do it, but it took a couple of hours of me just testing it and trying again and again and again and until it was able to give it to me. So if you're lucky enough to be able to go there and get it to work, good on you. But I took the responses that it gave me and just put it into a document. So I'm just going to walk you through that document. If you want a slightly better chance of getting access to this thing, you can also go here to Arena Battle which allows you to blind test two different models. So you put in your prompt down here and then it will give you two models answering the same thing. Then you pick which one you think is better. And it, after you do that, it will tell you which models it had. Now this new GPT-2 model is only one of the models you're testing. So you might have to run it a couple of times until you get it actually doing a comparison with the GPT-2 model included. It was testing Llama, it was testing GPT-4, it was testing the Claude models. And so I had to run my prompt several times to get any GPT-2 output, but I was able to get it eventually. So if you have time to play around with it, go ahead and do that. That's probably the best way to get it right now because to access it via the direct chat, it seems to be pretty overwhelmed with a lot of people testing it out right now. And so I feel like you might have a better chance of accessing it here inside of this arena battle area. It was also kind of fun too to look at the models, not know which one wrote what and to compare and choose the winner and then see what that winner happened to be. As a side note, I found that the Llama 370B parameter model actually was doing quite well and I frequently picked it over GPT-4 in many different cases. So another little win for Llama 3. But here's the document that I put together, just recording all of the prompts and the responses that I got that uh, are confirmed to come from GPT-2. The first one is a standard brainstorming prompt. We had, can you brainstorm 10, ide 10 ideas for a sci-fi beach romance? Of course, we're going with the sci-fi beach romance because people seem to like that. And just so we can have a consistent 
testing prompts for uh, all of these different models that we work with. And so I said, certainly blending sci-fi elements with a beach setting opens up a myriad of romantic and imagine imaginative possibilities. So already you can tell there's still a little bit of that GPT ness in words like myriad. But as you can see, some of the results we got here were really good. So we have temporal tides. Two strangers meet every year on the same secluded beach, but one is a time traveler from the future dealing with an impending aquatic disasters. Their annual meetings deepen into love, complicated by the secret of what the future holds and rules of time travel. What I found, as you can kind of see here, is that there is a much better inherent conflict behind some of the answers that it gave me. It gave me stuff that actually sounded like a story, not just a thing that could happen. I also found that a lot of these answers were more consistent with themselves. So they wasn't just making up generic answers that sounded right. It was making up answers that had a good deal of depth and interesting aspects to it. So for instance, we have this one in a future where real beaches are rare. And that already is like an intriguing conflict right there. Like why are beaches rare? Uh, what kind of dystopian future are we in where beaches are a commodity? People flock to virtual reality beaches to experience sun and sand. Two programmers fall in love while debugging a highly realistic beach simulation, but they must figure out if their connection is real or just another layer of the simulation. Like that already is a much better idea brainstormed here than what I've typically been able to get out of an LLM. The one I picked to continue with was this sand castles of time. A couple discovers a beach where building sand castles can alter reality. Each castle they build transports them to different historical epics, but also to parallel universes where they must find each other and fall in love over and over again. That just sounded interesting to me and very different and a little bit more outside of the box as compared to what I usually get out of the different chatbots. So from this answer right here, I took it to an outline prompt. I said, expand this story prompt into a full outline using Blake Snyder's Save the, Bat Save the Cat Beats. And then I gave it the idea. And the response it gave me was, again, very surprisingly good. It had a lot of depth. It had a lot of specifics. So this is one of those cases where I was comparing it to other models. And a lot of the output that the other models were giving me were very generic and said like something should happen here where like their their love is tested whereas a lot of what it gave me here with the gpt2 model that might be gpt4.5 was a lot more concrete and specific so we have like the setup jack an ar architect and lily a, histor a history professor take a vacation to try and reconnect they arrive at a secluded beach recommended in a mysterious old travel guide lily found in a secondhand bookstore they explore the beach noting its pristine and oddly untouched nature the guide mentions the beach's magical qualities in vague terms while walking they discuss their dreams and aspirations touching on what they used to love about each other lily jokes maybe we need a new world to find what we used to have so maybe a little on the nose but Still, it actually gives us the theme stated. Jack builds a sand castle on a whim, modeling it after a medieval castle. When they step in, inside the playful structure, the world is shifts dramatically and they find themselves in a medieval village dressed as a knight and a noble woman. So this is already a lot more specific with one of the other options that a different AI model gave me. It said they build a cast, castle and discover that it takes them to other worlds without sort of giving any specifics. Whereas this one was just like, it was a medieval castle. They were transported to this medieval realm. And I look at this and I'm like, that's a decent catalyst. Now, there are a few things here that are a little bit like, no, I would have to change that. For instance, they're talking about stepping inside this sand castle. And first of all, I, you know, other unless you're like a really amazing sand sculptor, you're not going to be building a sand castle that's big enough to walk through. But other than little things like that, I thought this is overall a really good thing. I also loved this part in the B story section where it said in each new world, they meet a consistent character, an enigmatic old man who hints at understanding more about the magical beaches. He discusses ideas of love, destiny and choice, deepening the theme. And I thought this was a really great little detail that it added in to sort of have this consistent character show up in different worlds. So while it wasn't perfect and I would definitely need to edit this thing if I actually wanted to use this outline, it was far better at giving me something that was specific and concrete than I've ever really been able to come across with other AI. But then it comes to the pros, okay? This is the thing that we all kind of really want to have right here. And the pros prompt I get, gave it was, write the first 500 words of this first scene in a sci-fi beach romance book. Be sure to focus on getting deep into the protagonist's point of view, Lily, first person, and show more than tell. 
And then I gave it a piece of the outline that it had given me recently. And then here's the response. The city's hum faded the moment we hit the coastline, the urban labyrinth of steel and smoke giving way to open skies and a relentless sea. Jack's hand, usually so sure and steady when it slipped into mine, felt tentative today, almost foreign. As we drove down the serpentine path that clung precariously to the cliffs, I couldn't help but notice the way our conversation stumbled, an awkward dance of words where once there was harmony. Uh, and so there's a lot of this sort of preamble here that, you know, I would probably have to trim quite a bit. But once we get to the dialogue, it started getting a little better. We have, here we are, I murmured, the words tasting strange, as if saying them made me la ma made this last-ditch attempt to con at connection all the more real. Jack killed the engine, and we stepped out. The breeze was salty, invigorating, and I inhaled deeply, letting the crisp sea air fill my lungs, tease apart the cobweb spun from too many hours spent in the musty, book-filled nooks of my university office. And to jump down a little bit more, we have, do you think the places can really be magical? I asked suddenly, my voice catching a little with vulnerability. Jack looked at me, his brow furled, a smile tugged at the corners of his mouth. I think people make places magical, not the other way around, he replied, his voice th thoughtful, a hint of the old warmth seeping through. I nodded, pondering his words. We had made magical places before, our laughter echoing through empty museums, our whispers coloring the corners of dim restaurants. But somewhere along the line, we had stopped creating and started existing side by side yet alone. And while there's certainly some like AI isms in there, some chat GBT isms, this gets deeper than I have managed to get out of an LLM before. Like this idea of people that make places magical, right? Uh, or this phrase here at the end, somewhere along the line, we had stopped creating and started existing side by side yet alone really has a profound sort of sense of despair that I think is actually pretty good writing, at least that particular phrase. And so what I have found after digging through this, because I also did another prompt here with Novel Crafter. So I took the prompt that Novel Crafter would have given me that it would have included information on characters, information about past chapters and everything, and plugged it into this model. I found that the actual quality of the prose was often not much better than GPT-4. It was still a little bit flowery, a little over the top, a, a, a few of those chat GPT-isms. However, one of the things that I got out of this is that it seems to understand the depth of conflict and story a little bit better than other models. And I, I know I can't really say it better than that. It just seemed to have a more intuitive grasp of what made a good scene. It wasn't trying to make everything so happy-go-lucky and fluffy. It actually had some weight to it. And I feel like the, the showing versus telling was a little bit better with this model. Now, we're gonna have to wait until this model is fully released, assuming this is actually GPT 4.5 or GPT 5, which I think it probably is. We're gonna have to wait and see this thing fully released before we can really run it through some tests because perhaps some of the issues that I'm seeing with it could be handled with just adjusting the prompts a little bit to make it a little bit better. But until we get that access to it, we're not really going to be able to test it out properly. But let me know your thoughts so far about everything that I've shared so far. And if you manage to get in there and test it yourself, let me know down below if how you are finding it and if you're seeing the results as being better or worse than GPT-4 or even Claude 3. So I hope that was useful for you and I will see you in the next video.